Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Indie Insights. My name is HighSight and we've got some great games to check out this week. First up tonight we have Split Brain by Lucifer or something or other here in chat. Uh, this game is going to be a kind of Hotline Miami meets John Wick style game where a big focus is put on dual wielding your weapons, which I like everything I just said in that sentence so I think I'm going to enjoy quite a bit. Next up after that we'll be checking out Blobby by KF Storm. Blobby has been in development for a bit of time now, and it focuses on a bouncing blob that sticks on walls and jumps onto other walls and bounces all over the place and gets to endpoints. It's going to be a relatively simple looking puzzle platformer, but a good first step nonetheless towards making some really complex and cool games. We'll see how the level design is and just take it from there. And lastly, after that, we're going to be checking out Mini RL, which is supposed to be a mini roguelike. I believe it's actually pronounced Mini Minerel, Minerel, something like that. But it's supposed to be kind of like a very accessible roguelike style game with features such as uh, procedural generation, permadeath, all that fun stuff. So that'll be a fun, uh, fun thing to check out. So without further ado, we're going to jump right into our first game of the night, Split Brain. So as I said before, this game is a top-down shooter, John Wick meets Hotline Miami game with, interestingly enough, a dynamic soundtrack, which is something that I have always loved in video games. I always love it when developers go that one step above and beyond to make their game adapt to the situation through their music. That's such a huge thing that helps immerse the player in what's going on around them. To have the environment react in some way, shape, or form like this, it's rare to see, but it's something I love seeing every time. FTL did it beautifully in its simplistic way by transitioning uh, combat music and exploration music on a dime just by adding percussion. And it worked out really great, and I think more games should take that under advisement. I think that's something I'm going to be doing with my own game, if we can find the right musician for it. Try to find a way to get some adaptive music in there, so we can kind of meet the situation going on around us. So I actually really want to see how this is implemented, and uh, see if it works out well, or if it's something that needs improvement. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Split Brain. Now one thing I also want to really focus on is the dual wielding aspect of this game. I have not touched it at all as usual and I want to know how hard it's going to be to dual wield. So right click shoots the right gun, left click shoots the left gun, as it says right there. Pretty straightforward, very Hotline Miami-esque in the speed of it all. Ah, now that's one thing. Corpses, while on the ground, can still block bullets. And actually I missed what that text was, so I don't know if that's ever going to show up again, but that might have been really important for me to read. If I hold shift, I walk, which is good. <laughs> the legs are a little crazy right now, but an A for effort on that. Legs that move uh, different from how your body moves is, actually, moves is actually really important for making things look normal. And so far it kind of works. I think it's pretty good. Press 2 to switch guns, uh, uh, gun modes. And, yep, missed all that and gained something. Ah, there we go. So that's a different game mode, or gun mode right there. That's what switches how you dual wield. <laughs> okay, I really like that one just because, I mean, come on. That's so over the top. If you shoot a gun like that, your elbows are going to go everywhere. Oh, that's going to hurt like hell. That is just not a comfortable way to hold a gun. So that's interesting, though. I kind of thought that something like this would be done with the mouse wheel. So it's actually done with the 1, 2, 3, and 4, and 5 buttons even. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, while that does work, I think that slows things down because your fingers are on WASD. Q reloads, E reloads. That's actually very intuitive because uh, you can reload your left or right gun as needed. I actually really like that a lot. But I would say that uh, right now the mouse wheel doesn't seem to do anything. And mouse wheels, they're pretty standard in games these days. You know, it's something, it's something you can grow to expect. Now, if you're in the action, you're not going to want to have to stop to think about what button to press to get it in the right position. Like right there, I was thinking maybe two, but it's actually two is the halfway, three is the full, four is way beyond, and then five is just badass mode right there. I, while I really like this dual wielding mechanic, I think that it's actually the lack of mouse wheel scrolling that's actually throwing it off a little bit. Yeah, five key, five different key binds to switch between gun modes is a little excessive, especially because you're gonna have to memorize that in high combat situations. So, let me actually try to memorize this. So four to go behind, I'm gonna need that, and then I'm gonna want two to go forward, so. I'm going to do, see if I can line it up. <laughs> Obviously, the AI is not on point, but that's totally fine for a tutorial. I also got to remember that left-clicking doesn't shoot both guns. I actually have to shoot both guns on my own. But I do like, I do like how they both have independent aiming. How You notice how they're not converging on my crosshair. They both have their own laser sights. I actually really like that mechanic. That's really solid. Brilliant decision, actually. Because that makes each gun, like, different, you know? Should hold shift for slow mode. Oh, it's actually slow motion. I thought it was just me walking. That's kind of cool. 
I don't know if it's slow-mo enough with the, uh... Yeah, while I'm in slow-mo mode, I would kind of hope that the music might adapt to that. So it would actually, like, you know, slow down. Maybe have, you know, even have a sound effect when you're entering slow-mo, like, and then the music kind of slows down, too. And then when you get out of slow-mo, you know, kind of... You can look at Killing Floor for, for good inspiration on that. I'm clearly stealing everything I said right there from what I've seen in Killing Floor, but that's because it works. Oh, apparently that goes over the shoulder. Or the table, whatever. Alright, so... Yeah, I... Oop, and that's the wrong button. Well... There we go. Yeah, I feel like the biggest letdown of this has probably got to be the, uh, the actual buttons you have to press to switch positions. Especially considering when you're in different position modes, like for this one, you're actually aiming this way, but the guns are aiming, like, in a completely different direction. Uh, I get why. I'm just not entirely sure. I get why I wouldn't just want to do this followed by that, you know? It's probably a lot easier for the player, instead of aiming behind them like this, as badass as this looks, it's probably easier for the player if we just aim forward both times, just like shoot up, shoot up, 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 up. It's excellent. no time to do a, a 180. No time at all. Oh, there's the reload I should have done. That reload animation's pretty cool. Oh, bad time to reload though. Yeah, I find myself a lot of time kind of ignoring the dual-wield mechanic, which is unfortunate. I mean, it still works out in the sense that I have basically double the ammo capacity, but... I, seem, I feel like I can do a lot more just by running and gunning, which is totally fine, really. I mean, that's what most games are like, and it's something that I think a lot of people are adapted to. Now, you can find yourself... You can put yourself, the player, in situations, rather, where they need a dual-wield. Like, here, here's a good example. Do we have... Yeah, this is a good example, so... Except it's really not, because he's going to see me first, so... Ah, and then I lose track of which hand is which. Like, you see you see the problem I was having right there was I just wanted to aim the gun there, but neither one of these are actually pointing in the direction of the gun. One thing you might want to consider, maybe... Well, no, because you're doing this, so you have the back end thing, so that doesn't really work. I was going to say, maybe make it so your right gun, or your left gun, because that's your left mouse button, I guess, so your left gun always points wherever the crosshair is. But that wouldn't really work. Unfortunately, not like this, because of the back shots. Well, that sucks. <laughs> How much ammo do I actually... Oh, not a lot. That's still satisfying, though. I like that a lot. I like those times. As for the actual stylization of the game, it's a little plain. I mean, it's got the... So what are we doing? We're doing blue, purple, green, and a good amount of pink. Just a liberal bit of pink. And I guess that works. It's not like over the top or anything, but it definitely has a striking resemblance. I mean, the character's pink, so he'll, he, she, whatever it is, they'll always stand out. I think it's a he. They'll always stand out in the, in the game, and that's really important that your main character stands out nicely. Should probably try to stop getting shot, though. Ooh, that didn't work out. So, here's another thing. Some objects can be shot over, some can't. This one is a little lower, I guess, and this one, I guess, is a different color, but they still look kind of similar. If you look at the drawers here, they have the same exact color going on here as this guy. Try to make it more distinguishable what can be shot over and what can't be. Because that's going to be pretty important knowledge to have at a glance, you know? I definitely see this as a game that you'll get better at as you go. But well, there's definitely going to be that learning curve of actually understanding the, uh, the dual wielding mechanic to make this all work. One thing I might also recommend, have the camera move a little bit in the direction that you're looking. Oh, what have we here? So, like, let's see, so that'd be three and one? Alright, so... I kind of thought I could... Thought shooting these might get something? Oh, that's first aid. Okay. They kind of look like targets for target practice or something. Ah. Dang it. There we go. It's when you miss, that's when you're in trouble. Don't miss. That's basically the pro tip I'm taking away from this. Just be good. As for the sound design, I do hear the dynamic music. It's not like over the top, but it's definitely there. You'll notice once I get seen... Watch, I'm gonna... Oh, I'm actually stuck going that way. And I'm stuck going this way. What's happening? What? I don't know why, but the camera's... Okay. My character just went a little haywire. I started moving in one direction and I couldn't stop. So yeah, you'll definitely notice there's some degree of, uh... Eh, you know, it's probably just safer if I pop. Ah, missed. Ah, hit. 
there's some degree of uh, give, I guess you could say, with the with the music. You'll notice that whenever I get caught or something, see, see, you hear that kind of start up in there, that and then it like starts going to the percussion. That's really good. It's really simple, but it's enough. Now, if I get out of his vision, is that is he gonna give up or is he just gonna keep hunting me down? Let's see. Now, it sounds like he's still going for me, at least from the music side of thing, but I don't see him yet. Has he lost sight of me? Yeah, it looks like he gave up, but the music didn't acknowledge that. Simple enough. But once I kill him, things kind of die down? Maybe not. I don't know why it is, but for some reason, I want to associate my left click with my dominant hand. And that's actually really throwing me off, because when I left click, I expect the, the gun on my right to shoot, my right hand to shoot. And I know that's backwards, and I know it's actually kind of counterintuitive, but it's just its just how I see things. And I'm sure there might even be a uh, possibility of setting it up so you can set whatever bu uh, button to whatever gun hand, but as it stands right now, it's just kind of throwing me off a little bit. All right, what do we got here? A lot of hexagons. I like hexagons. It's kind of my thing. Getting these lined up just right. Not easy. Aha! Disco music. So what do I dig? I really dig the animations going on here. I really dig the uh, the gibs, the ragdolls. It all looks good. Visually, this is very nice. Very nice. But what I do notice is the environment itself is kind of stale. I mean, so far, this is probably the most active thing we've seen in the environment is this little disco tech thing going on right here. But even still, there's no lighting. There's no... Uh, what can I, there's not a lot of animation going on. The doors are like the first interactable I've actually seen in this. Why is it that I can't shoot things? You know, like, why aren't there some barrels scattered around that can be shot and, like, used for cover temporarily? Something like that, you know? I feel like you could do a lot more with these environments. So definitely consider some form of lighting would be nice. Some form of, uh... Pop... Some form of, uh... Interactables. I mean, the door, like I said, that's interactable, except the door doesn't really... Well, it seems to help them more than me. Come on. Get shot. There it is. Open the door with a gunshot. Gunshot opener. Sounds like a... Sounds like either a band name or a... Song name. I don't know. I'm not no artist. What I do know is I want to shoot these guys at the same time, and yet I didn't. Ah. Oh, I'm dying so hard. I need to switch back quicker than that. Where's the health? Health over here? Health over here. Now what about some kind of uh, a dodge roll mechanic or something? Like right now, you have the slow time mechanic, but honestly, I don't I don't see much use in that. I don't see the slow time mechanic being all that useful, especially with the speed that it slows it down to. It's really not that great. I'd much rather see some kind of a dodge roll mechanic, some kind of a, uh, some kind of a mobility boost. Something like that. The aesthetic's definitely unified. It definitely works. It just feels plain, that's all. Now, we also got that guy right there. He was sitting at the DJ booth with a gun, just staring at the DJ booth. Now, I'm sure to some degree he's supposed to be a DJ, but he wasn't really interacting with the DJ table right here, you know? Not not interacting with these uh, with these discs or anything. He just stood there with a gun. I guess he just likes to look at the turnstile or something. Whatever it's called. Okay, looks like I'm hurting a little. I should stop doing that. I really do like the gun mechanic, the dual wielding mechanic, but I just think right now it's not in a good place with its uh, controls. I think that's the biggest thing, is to try to get more control over the mechanic. Because right now, it's just kind of a pain to switch between the two. You gotta remember the button, and not screw up. Like, okay, so, right there, oh, that was, that was my downfall. I went in there, and I was thinking, okay, I'm gonna shoot them, and then I saw more dudes, and I tried to aim the gun, and... That's where it loses everything, honestly. Here's the deal. You got a lot of enemies set up in kind of a, uh, in a position to be shot at the same time. And that's obviously intentional, and that's obviously great. But the problem is, hey, how do I actually aim at them? I have to, like, split down the middle, and sometimes it's different per, per one. I have to kind of guesstimate where to aim. Instead of putting a crosshair on one of them and having the right gun aim at that while the left gun aims in the other direction. That would be the more optimal thing. Yoko says, player shooting effect is kind of weak. The bullet is kind of small and moves so fast that you can hardly see it in one frame. It's across the screen, 
Uh, make the player feel powerful. Make the bullets huge and leave glowing trail behind it. Juice it or lose it. I like the idea of that glowing trail a lot, actually. That's a really cool idea, and I really dig that. But the biggest thing I can say right now that would help your controls, make one of these guns always pointing where the crosshair is every time. This crosshair has to mean something, and right now it really doesn't. It's just kind of an indicator where the player's pointing, but we don't care where the player's look looking. We care about where the gun is pointing. Ah. And Gaming says he likes how you, when you die, you restart immediately. T couldn't agree more. That is such a huge thing for any game to do. Hotline Miami did it perfectly, and this game follows suit just right. Anytime you die, you don't want to have your player dwelling on their death. You want them to get right back in the action and not question whether or not they should keep playing. Do not treat death like a gigantic penalty. Not Definitely not a time penalty. You waste the player's time, they're just going to get tired and leave. Now, I should also mention these bullets, how they just kind of hang around and don't really do anything after they uh, land, as it were. Oh, like right here, I'm just trying to aim at this one dude in this one gun mode, but I, I just can't, so I have to switch to this one. Because it's the best way to aim at him. That's definitely the best piece of advice I can give, give at this point. Definitely make the aiming better in other gun modes. It's going to be hugely important. Oh, right, human shield. I forgot that was a thing. I think it was described at one point during the tutorial, but I think I missed that. That might have been the one line that I missed. Overall, though, for a student project, this is exceptionally high quality. I'm very impressed. There we go. That's right. Shoot all them guns. Although while I have them, I can't seem to really move myself. Ah, whatever. Pop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Why did I bounce all there? <laughs> what happened? There we go. Now, unlike Hotline Miami, it doesn't matter too much if I get shot once or twice. And that does kind of make it a lot easier. Because you can definitely go into some rooms expecting to get shot and live right through it and then just move on to the next room. It's not really a... It doesn't destroy the gameplay, I would say. Like, you know, Hotline Miami, obviously this inspired some degree to it. And Hotline Miami worked around that mechanic. This one, I feel like you're setting me up so... Why was he still alive? You're setting me up. So this is actually a pretty easy game by comparison of what it could be, which is a lot more challenging. Like that right there, that's a shotgun blast. That should have killed me. I mean... It's not a huge deal that it doesn't. Like I said, it just makes the difficulty that much easier. Now, you can supplement this with, with off-screen indicators or just a better camera that, as I said, kind of focuses out towards where you're pointing. So you have to kind of keep an eye on where things are. But if you do go the one-hit kill mechanic, you have to do what Hotline Miami 1 did and not what Hotline Miami 2 did. And for those who don't know what I mean, I mean Hotline Miami 2 made a huge, huge mistake in its level design with all these gigantic corridors that you couldn't see all the way down. And because of that, you couldn't actually properly aim and see the enemies that were coming up. You had to kind of guess if you were going to die now or not. And that was a pretty big problem. Okay, so two, four. Okay, so let's see. Two. Ah, whatever. Oh, right. That's an actual steel girder. Yeah, I'd say it's actually the pillar's fault here. These pillars look way too much like just ordinary objects on the ground. Alright, so let's see. Okay. Oh, that was time to reload. That is a bad thing because I'm not reloading and now I'm dying. I don't have many shots left. Should have probably died there. Grab my health. Thank you. Now, I can't really move these guys when I have them except for directing them, I guess. Kind of makes them a little pointless, but I get what you're going for. You're going for the whole... Whoop. You're going for the whole idea of, uh, you know, they're, they're resisting... Hey, rank A, not too bad. Everyone is dead. Hallelujah. And I think that's where our little little game ends right now. I do like the ranking system, though I think it kind of goes away really quickly in other levels. The last one, obviously not. It just kind of sticks around, which is fine. But I would like to see uh, more expansion on why I got a grade A. You know, like, this is all the combos you got. This is all the kills you got. This is all the times you were shot, which might reduce time or your score, I guess. But overall, I will say you got a good framework here. It just needs a few minor tweaks, nothing major, nothing extravagant, but a few tweaks, obviously some more levels, a little uh, re-examination of the aiming mechanic, and I think you got yourself a good game here. Excellent work. This has been Split Brain, everybody. Thanks a lot for the submission, Lucifer. All right, so that was Split Brain. Not too shabby, not too shabby at all. While we talk about the feedback, we're going to do a giveaway, not of Skyhook, because I don't have any more, I don't have any more keys for Skyhook. But instead, we're going to do a giveaway for an indie box game I got a while back that I already owned by the name of Freedom Planet. Now, for those who don't know Freedom Planet, you can type exclamation point giveaway 
to try to enter. For those who don't know Freedom Planet, this game is like everything that I love about the original 2D Sonic the Hedgehogs, except better in every way. I mean, I love Sonic the Hedgehog, I truly do, but this is like the natural evolution of the for formula. If you've never played Freedom Planet, this is definitely a game for you. We got a couple other games we'll give away after that tonight, but definitely take a look at Freedom Planet. All right, so let's go ahead and look at this feedback. Yeah, if you don't win this, definitely look up Freedom... I'm going to give a link to Freedom Planet. Definitely recommend it. So yeah, so uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Luce, for, th for the submission. Let's see what we got here. First off, we have BP Outlaws Jeff saying... Oh, well, that's actually not for him. Uh, New Roo says... Multiple firing positions is neat, but five unique buttons makes it a bit gimmicky. Consider a single button that toggles between modes or reducing the modes or both. I would agree that of all the modes I used, I most used the side-to-side -side one, the forward-facing one, and the si uh, diagonal one. So, like, you know, straightforward, diagonal, side-to-side. -side. I don't really think you need the back shot one, and I don't think you need the front and back one. I think those are both overkill. I would say the three gun modes would be fine, and if you move them between your mouse... Uh, your mouse scroll wheel, I think that would be just plenty. I think you don't need much more than that. I think I think that would help immensely with the player getting set up right. Because right now, touching the numpad buttons, they just it doesn't feel quite right. You know what I'm saying? Next up, we have Orinbot saying, For casual players, this game is fine, but the style is really a hardcore gamer's thing. So that difficulty... Uh, up that difficulty and make the AI a motherfucker. I could not agree more, Orin, but I mean, Hotline Miami is my jam, and all I was thinking while I was playing this was like, okay, it's it works, it's functional, but it ain't no Hotline Miami. Why don't I just play Hotline Miami instead? What what does this have that Hotline Miami doesn't have? And I guess you could say it has the dual wielding. Hotline Miami 2 had the one dude that dual wielded, but this was a different kind of dual wielding that could lead to some very interesting situations. I'd say up the juice factor and the viability of the slow motion, and definitely re-examine that, uh, that dual wielding mechanic, and I think you got something special there. So yeah, that's... Uh that's that. Next up, BP Outlaws Jeff says, You would mouse wheel up and down to get the shooting forward. Oh, okay. You mouse wheel down to shooting forward, up all the way to extended back. So flicking it forward and backwards as you're playing. Actually, Jeff, I love that idea. I was just saying to toggle between, you know, one, two, and three. But I like the idea a lot better of you actually using the mouse wheel to go, like, almost, you know, 360. You could even variableize it. You don't need all three. You don't need the three modes. You could literally just be, like, moving the arms out by degrees, based off of how you scroll wheel. Jeff, I like that a lot. I'm going to give you some bits for that one. So I'm just going to... Right, good call, Jeff. Good call. I'm going to give you 10 bits for that one. Good feedback. New Bruce says, Battle marks and stains on the ground are great. They add permanence. I would agree with that, but I'd say the bullets, not so much. The bullets need a little bit of work on that. Uh, another song. Next up, New Bruce says, Really like the idea of changing gun position mid-battle, and... What not a la Oh and what not a la Equilibrium's gun kata. Gun gun kata? Never heard of that. I'll have to look that up later. That would be awesome action, but you must simplify the controls and make it dead st stupid easy to switch between firing positions back and forth. Couldn't agree more, New Bruce. You gotta make it really simple, otherwise it's just gonna be a hindrance instead of a help. And again, the aiming controls really gotta be enhanced on that. It's really gotta be... The crosshair has to mean something. It's that simple. It's really gotta be... They gotta mean something. Uh, let's see. Next up we have... Uh, because, uh, BP Jeff saying, hang on, yeah, because it's top down, you can separate the arms and rotate the degree by degree on the mouse scroll wheel. Yeah, that's why I was thinking too. There's no reason to lock them at specific angles. At least try for the outward, outward spread motion. I definitely agree. That could be really cool. That could be a definite game changer. Next up, BP Outlaw says, this game has a buttload more, uh, needs a buttload more enemies and dual flamethrowers. I, yes, yes. And I know you're mainly saying that because you're making a game about a dragon, but yes. More flamethrowers has never been... It's never been a problem. It's never been a question of, should I put flamethrowers in the game? It's more a question of, why are there not enough flamethrowers in this game? Every time, 9 out of 10. Definitely agree. Uh, next up, we have New Bruce saying, The aesthetic is pretty unified and doesn't break immersion, but it's also pretty void of detail. Of course, art assets are always in short supply, but you would recommend uh, expanding your floor and wall tile set. I would agree, you don't want to go too far to the point where you can't recognize different things from one another. You kind of want to keep things relatively similar looking to a degree, but I would agree. 
I would agree that you could definitely expand it a little bit more. Ornbot says, this game is way too easy. Serious difficulty issues. Just play Hotline Miami once and you'll know what you need to do. Yeah, I think uh, he's definitely been inspired by it, but it definitely needs that kick in the pants for the difficulty. I think right now the AI is just so brain dead it doesn't quite work. There's also, I think, a little bit of a speed issue in play. I think the character could move a lot quicker. I mean, I would at least experiment with the idea of getting that character at least double the speed and just see where it goes from there. See what double the speed does for your character. I think it would work out nicely so long as the, the weaponry is easy to control. That's about the best thing I could say for that. Definitely see at the very least what it could do. So after that, we have Gamian saying, I like how you restart immediately after dying. Couldn't agree more. Uh, we talked about Yoko saying that the player's shooting effect is kind of weak. Yeah, it could definitely have more juice, especially with the neon style going on there. I like the idea of the glowing trail. That's a really nice idea to have that little almost 80s neon style to it, if you know what I mean. Uh, Ferreter says, from what you can see, there doesn't seem to be much of a purpose in having separate firing buttons on either hands. It only adds control difficulty. Either make sure it has a purpose or simplify it. And, of course, BP Outlaws shows Blam Flambeer's Juicy Talks, as well as the Juice It for Lose It talk. I will definitely make sure that they get both links, or Lucifer gets both links. I cannot recommend Juice It or Lose It enough to every developer here. Juice It or Lose It is an excellent example of just what needs to happen in everybody's game. How, how you need to look at your game's effects, and how they really need to be made just juicy as hell. Just, mmm, I love juice. Nubru says, more about gun angles. If you want to do it, uh, do it like this. Start with only one different angle, put the player in situations where they must use alternate angles, then unlock a new angle and put them in a new situation where the new angle is relevant. I don't know if you have to unlock the angles, but I would agree that you definitely want to paste them into them. There's no reason that you should be throwing all the angle usages at them at once. That's just kind of, it's overkill. You want to go from one situation that uses one angle to another situ situation that uses another angle. I definitely wouldn't, um, I wouldn't go overboard and uh, bother... Uh, unlocking them. It seems a little over the top. Ah, Mr. Mr. Rosa, or Morosta? Thank you. Uh, welcome, by the way. You think the level design is the biggest problem here? It's just too easy and repetitive. I would definitely agree with that, uh, Morosta. Please tell me if I'm saying your name wrong. I would definitely agree with that. I think that the level design is just a little too... It's too wide open, and you're not seeing enough of the rooms that you're going into. You need to make sure the player can see everything in the room that they're going into. So make the rooms a bit smaller, and that'll make for some more cramped battles, where it's really more a question of split-second decisions, instead of, um... I guess you could call this planning ahead of time a lot before you go into the room. There's not a lot of time pressure usually to go from one room to another, because there's no real patrolling motions in most of the cases, but that's something that can be looked at in the future. Showcase says if you add emphasis to movement, such as speed boosts, it uh, make it so damage hurts mobility a little. Lower movement speed, etc. I like that idea. Uh, Orinbot says if you're going to have each gun reload, but not have patrolling enemies that have AI to catch you while reloading, the mechanic of reloading is wasted. Yeah, that's actually an excellent observation there, Orinbot. Right now there are some patrolling enemies, but they don't really patrol much. Most of the time, they're all facing away from the door that you're going to move through, uh, so you don't need to bait them out or anything like that by maybe touching the door and then backing up, of which there aren't really that many doors in the game right now. And it definitely feels like uh, adding like a shooting through the door mechanic might be cool, because then you can shoot people and then that'll... If you shoot someone through a door, that should alert everyone around them. So that would kind of be like you're kicking the door in, and then all chaos is going to break loose. You need to adjust quickly for whatever the hell's going on around you. And I think that would work out nicely, you know? Gun, load, gun reloading right now, there's not much to it. You just reload, and you're safe, like, every time. Uh, BP Outlaw Jeff says, Don't feel bad about the feedback. You're getting a ton of it, because uh, we think it's super cool with some tweaks. I cannot stress enough that we are not trying to gang up on you here. I hope, I hope every developer who enters into this understands that. This is purely feedback to try to help you out. We, I like this game a lot. I think it's on the right path. These are just suggestions that we hope can help improve upon your game over time. Uh, Money Mike says, Make it so... Uh, make it where you can choose difficulty. The harder the difficulty, the less health you have. That'd be a good way to go. That'd be a nice little middle ground between uh, Hotline Miami and what we got going on here. I'm not saying every top-down shooter has to be Hotline Miami. I'm just saying it's been successful in the past and a proven method to make things work. Uh, so I would say definitely, uh, if you could have a difficulty gauge in there, definitely have a, uh, what, what would we call it? Uh, 
So <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a pun between hardcore and hotline and hotcore comes into mind. And I pray to God that if you Google hotcore, it doesn't come up with some kind of a really kinky fetish of some sort. But I would say make some kind of a, you know, hot, hotcore Miami mode. I don't know. I'm just saying definitely get a mode in there where it's a one shot kill. <laughs> Uh, let's see. New Bruce says, great work so far. Super cool mechanic with the gun angles. Drill down on that. Refine it. Clean it up. Make it the centerpiece of all the gameplay. Couldn't agree more. Uh, Juju Adams says, why not make the arms split dependently on distance between the player and the cursor? Uh, you can make a fancy shooting, uh, make fancy shooting a necessity by heavily limiting ammunition. I kind of got there, actually, towards the end of the last level. I only had a few shots left on one of my guns, so I couldn't even use my left gun anymore. And if I didn't get that shot just right, I think I had two shots left to take down the last guy, so I would have probably died. But of course, there isn't really any kind of backup for if you run out of ammo, is there? As far as I could tell, there were no ammo pickups. I wonder if you could introduce some kind of, uh, you know, gun pickup mechanic down the line, so you can start having giving minimal ammo to the player going in, and then it's a question of picking up all the guns you can get along the way and just killing everybody. Hotcore my ammo mode. I kind of really like that. <laughs> this got weird. When doesn't it get weird? Ah, lovely. What else we got right here? Uh, BBL uh, Jeff says, you will let the player dual wield everything. Go the opposite of Hotline Miami and let the player have uh, get a little absurd in the realistic movement. Like how in Dead Rising, it lets you do uh, dual wield pretty much pretty surreal weapons despite the realistic art. Dual rocket launchers shooting in different directions would be something no one has ever done before. I could not agree more with the dual rocket launchers. The only other game I can think of unless you do that is Borderlands 2 with the gun Zerker. And everything about that was great. So yeah, dual wielding rocket launchers. Totally agree. 10 out of 10. Best game ever. IGN. 10 out of 10. Pretty good. Not too shabby. 1 out of 3. It's okay. Uh, let's see. Juju Adams says, add a time limit for levels. You'd be amazed how player, to, uh, how player behavior changes. Make them rush into dangerous and fun situations. I'd say you don't even really need a time limit. I'm, I'm not a big fan of time limits. What you need is time pressure. And the difference between time limit and time pressure, time pressure is applied to you when you are about to die if you don't act in a certain situation. And usually time pressure comes into play through patrols. I think as long as you've got enough patrolling enemies going on, you won't need any kind of time limit because you're going to be under time pressure to not die from the enemy that's about to round the corner and kick your face in with a bullet. That's what I would go with. That's what I would go with. BPL, as Jeff says, agree with Juju Adams. Gotta at least try a time limit. It can change the game drastically. Prototype I'm going, uh, I'm doing now was boring until you threw in a timer to make it uh, and turned it into a totally different and more fun game. Original design had no time limit, but you gotta at least throw one in there to see how it feels. Giggity. It might not be appropriate, but you gotta, you gotta try or you'll never know. Gotta agree. Oren says, the worst feedback you can get is good game. Well, yeah, it's kind of just going... Uh, remember, guys, you want to keep the feedback actually relative to the game itself, so... Don't, don't just throw in random things. Uh, and Nubru says, Alien Breed, another top-tier, top-down shooter that you must play for this genre. Yeah, I might get some inspiration from that. All right, wow, we got a lot of feedback on that game. I hope that helps you out there, Lucifer. Definitely some good feedback in there. I saw you said you appreciate it, and I definitely appreciate giving it. And I think I deserve a little drink real quick. Unfortunately, not vodka or anything, just... Healthy water. My god, I think this mic is so sensitive that you guys heard me actually swallowing. Is that- did that happen? Did you guys hear me swallowing the water? Oh my. I love this thing. Finally got the boom, uh, or the pop filter on it. I think it makes a big difference. All right, so last call on the giveaway, everybody. <laughs> Boo water. <laughs> ah, good times. Yes, we will be giving the feedback to the developer at the end of the stream. Uh, we've been changing up how things work lately. Nowadays, uh, the stream should be up pretty quickly, maybe a day, uh, a day or two maximum to get the stream up on YouTube in its entirety. So everybody's going to see this. Everyone's going to hear the water. Good times. Gulp. <laughs> Welcome, soaps. Last call on the giveaway. I'm going to give you guys 10 seconds. Ah, yes. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. 
And the winner of the giveaway is... Yoko700! Thank you so much for the entry, and I hope you enjoy your copy of Freedom Planet. Now, if there's any problem with this key, just let me know. I think I have another one lying around. I really did not plan to use these, and then I realized I should probably just use these. And hey, he actually had a logo, so you guys got to see that feature for once. Hooray! Good old bot. I love my bot. I'm working on getting Game Wisp integrated into my bot, so you guys can use that instead of Patreon if you wish. Good times. Finally someone with a... <laughs> yeah, finally someone with a, with a logo. It's good times. Oh, don't say this is awkward, Yokos. Don't even say this is awkward. Oh, you stole the victory from Shark Faith. That's fine. But we're going to move on. Well, Yokos, I can't re-roll, so you screwed everybody. You you got to give it to somebody of your choice. Just until people, you know, have people go, me, 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 me. You got to choose. Way to go, Yokos. I did not plan for people, you know, <laughs> entering if they already had it. Way to go. Next up, we have Blobby. Now, this game is by KF Storm, who's in chat right now. This game is currently, I think it's still in a relative prototype phase to some degree or another, so uh, as such, it doesn't have any sound, it doesn't have any music. It's really more or less an experimental game to see how it plays out. Uh, mainly, it's all a game about a bouncing little blob that attempts to get through levels by sticking to certain walls, jumping off those walls, jumping off other walls, bouncing off everything, and trying not to die. It's a lovely little... Uh, Everything. Cave Storm is here. There he is. So yeah, so uh, we're gonna. I'm gonna actually continue playing music through this because I know that there's no, uh, there's no uh, music in this game right now. So I'll give you guys a little ear candy, but just bear in mind all the music you hear from here on out is not actually part of the game, though it is sexy as hell because it's probably either from OC Remix or Game Chops. Look at that, KF Storm prepared a statement. Hello, my name is Storm Hughes. I'm a 17-year-old game developer who made Blobby, the game where you're about to see. Just to defend myself, you made Blobby in a week on a whim to create something. Hey, a week is an impressively small amount of time to make any kind of game, so that in and of itself is impressive. Let's go and give this guy some credit. Let's check out Blobby. So you jump in, and you got this little blob dude who I can't actually move around. The way Blobby moves, he'll slowly bounce towards the cursor, which is pretty, that's a pretty standard, not standard even, just a, a good little mechanic. You just aim in the direction you want to go. But if I press right click, he'll actually attach to whatever he's going on. And then you can left click and he'll bounce. So you can chain that to try to get through areas, it seems. But of course, he's also a little out of control because he bounces all over the place. Now, one thing, the first thing I would say, I love that the eye follows the cursor. That's actually really cool. That's actually really a smart way to indicate which direction he's going to go. But what would be better than that even would be some kind of a, like an arrow, an arrow or a line or something that kind of points in the direction that you want him to go, you know? I mean, if you left click, you're going to go to some degree where you want, but it's not like a straight shot or anything. Now, I also like the light effect that goes around him. He turns the area around him red. Uh, see, that didn't really work out. He turns the area around him red when he bounces, or connects to something, I should say, rather. He's a little unwieldy, but he works. He's a functional little blob, dude. Make it to the door. Come on. There you go. All right, then he gets to the next area. And he bounces nicely. There's a few little questionable bounces that he's done so far I've seen, but it's not over the top too much or anything. Now, what's up there? Can I reach that? Let's try to attach this moving platform. Look at that. I should have been crushed. Aha! Buttons. Buttons are a feature. Oh, God! <laughs> ah, still alive. Oh, God. Oh, God. Yokos, why does the light flash when you land? You're not a fan of it being so intense. I kind of like it because it's actually a very quick indicator. It's a very, very quick indicator that uh, you have stuck to the thing. I mean, granted, the whole stopping thing is also a pretty quick indicator, but actually seeing that flash, I kind of like it. I guess it's all to, to taste, but for me, I like it. It's a taste that I I like. Yokos also says, this is a really good concept for a platformer. It seems like there's a lot you can do with that. It does actually play very well. I was a little worried that it would be too out of control, but I think once you get used to the bouncing mechanic and the sticking mechanic, it actually controls very easily. It's just a question of, you just right-click whenever you want to, you know, uh, stick onto something, and you left click to bounce in that direction. Plays out pretty nice. Of course, there's also a limit to it because you're gonna not always move the way you want, and sometimes you just kind of wait until the bouncing gets you to where you want to go. But for the most part, I don't think it's that big of an issue. I think it it kind of plays out nicely, and you can kind of oh, you can kind of play around with them yourself to figure out your own means of solving these puzzles. Whee! 
But I would say it would be nice if there was more control over the amount of power you exert. Like right there, you, you notice how like I'm just like right up here. I just want it to be a very small, small, small jump. And it, look at how far he went right there. It would be nice if there was more control over the amount of power. And that could be demonstrated through something like an arrow pointing in a direction that gets thicker and bigger depending on how far away your mouse cursor is. Something along the lines of, I guess you could say, uh, you could watch how Worms does it. You know, whenever you're aiming something. Uh, I probably don't want to do that. That'd be crushy, crushy, sad times. But I don't think there's actually any crushing to worry about. He's kind of a gel gelatinous cube. Well, not even cube. Sphere. Not a lot of pain. God, I hope he can't feel pain. That would hurt like hell. Oop, oop, oh, oh, hey, well, hey, hang on, little buddy. There we go. There we go. Now, the physics, I assume, are all just box 2D physics, or physics 2D, whatever they call it now built into Unity. I know this is a Unity game, and that's fine. It serves its purpose. It's not too over the top. It's pretty manageable. I think it works fine. I don't think you need to really make any modifications from there. But even these little simple level designs do show a great deal of potential. He oh no! The only scary thing is when he's uh, about to fall. Now one thing I would recommend is right now you right click before you land in order to uh, specify that you want to stick to the next surface. But when you right click, there's no real immediate notification. Well, there we go. That's a that's a long way down. There's no immediate notification that informs you that the next click is going to stick or the next object is going to be stuck to. It's just basically your memory, not not even your memory, but you telling it and having to realize that, you know? Now is there a way to unstick? Let's see. Yeah, if you click twice in the air, then you're not going to stick. That's all the more reason that you might want to have some kind of an indicator mid-air. Maybe even have him change colors while he's mid-air and stuck on things. That might be a good way to go. Now, this level in particular I'm a little worried about because it's a cool idea, but you might want to consider having some semi-solid platforms like halfway up, like where I was before, because hey, once you lose the progress, that progress is lost, and that is a lot to lose. That Look at how much trouble I'm having now to get back up there, and look at how much time I've wasted trying to get back to where I was. you got to always try to make sure not to waste your player's time. If they accomplish something, let them have that accomplishment. Come on, I need to... Uh, but I'm having just a little bit of trouble because I can't quite... Okay, this might work. Uh, okay, close enough. Uh, Yoko says, High sight's right. Blobby should jump further and, ha uh, uh, jump further the further the cursor is. Perhaps have a visible arc on screen for your fancy trajectory before you jump. Totally agree. Ah, no, no, no! Yes, no! Yes! Yeah, there we go. Close enough. Sometimes this works perfectly, sometimes... It's not quite what you expected, and then you're all sads. You do, like I said, you get a little bit of give. Not a lot, but a little... Ooh, see right there, I was kind of screwed. I couldn't really bounce back. I couldn't bounce straight up like I was hoping to. I was just kind of... Uh, is there a, a way to just let go? Like, I try to right-click, right? Let's click here. If I just right-click right now, what's going to happen? It's going to shoot me forward. What about just a let go? Because there are definitely going to be times when you don't want to burst forward somewhere. You just want to let go. And that's going to be important for making sure you don't screw yourself over. As adorable as Blobby is here, he can be a little tricky to control. Which I guess is obviously the point, but even still, you gotta make some kind of a consideration for the player. Oh, close. Oh, oh, no, 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 Blobby, Blobby, no! No, Blobby! No, oh, god damn it. Uh, it, it, it does get really tricky, particularly with these moving platforms, getting things figured out. So definitely in your level design, you definitely have to plan for failure. You have to plan for the player having some form of recovery from some form of failure that might not even be inherently their own fault. There we go, much better. Now the camera's also got to move a lot quicker than that, because look at all the stuff that I didn't see coming, that I just kind of had to assume before the camera could pan up high enough for me to know. Alright. Ah, now that's another thing. Did you see how wild he bounced back when he hit the sidewall? Even though it was like just barely tapping it, there's definitely a little too much over-the-top physics going on there when you just touch a wall. Way, way too much. All right, let's see if we can... Oh, okay, well, that also works. Oh, no! 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 Oh, this is where the game turns from fun, -ish to, fun to frustrating. <laughs> Because it's just like, now I got so much, I, I can only get it right, the, I get one chance really to get it right. After that, it's pretty much all going to go really downhill really quickly. And I mean that figuratively and literally. It's more like a down factory, not so much a hill. I guess one thing I can try to do is stop sticking to things, but yeah, see that doesn't really work. Because then if I get tapped, it's all going to go pretty bad pretty quick. So, how do I solve this little puzzle? 
Oh, not quite a high enough jump. Yeah, trajectory uh, would be definitely best shown ahead of time. <sighs> okay, that kind of works. Oh, hey, catch! Ah, please, okay. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> I got lucky there. Yoga says the camera should be ahead of where you're going rather than behind where you're going. You want to see where you're going, not where you've been. That's an excellent point, actually. That's some good camera advice right there. You definitely want your camera to point out to you where Blobby's going to go next, not so much the other way around. You don't want the camera to be determined where it's... You don't want to determine where the camera's going to go based off of where Blobby is. You want it the exact opposite. You want the camera to tell you where Blobby's going. You gotta plan ahead. Oh, this was a bad plan. Oh, this was a horrible idea. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> camera. All right, we're gonna give this one more crack, and then I think I'm gonna have to give up on Blobby here, because this is, this is just not working. Blobby, please. We'll see if we can try any of the other levels, see if those uh, are easier. I know there's a level select. I don't know how many more levels there are from here. This might be the uh, magnum opus of Blobby. Now, I also know sometimes there are definitely situations where Blobby is attached and then he loses himself, and that happened like three times right there. And that, look at that, look at that slide. I didn't want that slide. Who wants that slide to happen? Nobody. He seems like he has the most trouble when he's up against corners. Corners are Blobby's worst enemy. Hands down. He doesn't have to fear much in the way of being dissolved, but corners or edges, those, those just destroy the Blobby. Now, as the developer said, this was made in a week on a whim. And considering that, I think he did a damn good job. But if you wanted to expand on this, definitely got to look into some of these these corners and uh, edges and stuff like that. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. Blobby want up. No. Now, I'm sure uh, if you're experienced enough, I'm sure you can get up this no problem. But, you know, not everybody's immediately experienced in the way of blobbiness. Uh, I was hoping he'd actually jump a little higher than that. Come on, Blob. But yeah, the biggest biggest boost I think you could give is both to the camera, predicting where you're going to go, and to the trajectory telling you where you're going to go ahead of time. Giving the player as many mechanics as you can to get around the, the mobility trick here, which the whole game is based around being tricky in mobility. That, that's really the gimmick, I guess you could say, is tricky mobility. That would help a lot. That would go a long way with making this game a lot more fun. But you also got to make sure that he can't just keep slipping off things. It's supposed to be a sticky blob. That's the point. So, yeah, like, if that keeps happening, that's just ruining all the fun. So you got to make sure if you're going to make the game all about your movement, you got to tighten up your movement as best as you possibly can. Uh, this particular guy, he probably shouldn't be over the, uh, the one platform I can use to get up there because he just keeps knocking me away. And there's not a lot I can do about that. Okay, well, let's just try to jump up. Okay, well, whatever. There it is. Come on. Ah, uh, see, now I'm screwed. Now I'm screwed. Can I just go down? Ah, oh, no! Blobby. Why, Blobby? Oh, Blobby! Oh, Blobby! Oh, Blobby! I didn't right-click at all in any of those scenarios. Oh, Blobby. Be one with the blob. I don't know if you can be enough of a blob. I think Blobby is too blobby for me. He's too much of a pro. Let's try to backtrack. I don't know if this is going to take me right out of the game. It will. Let's try to backtrack real quick. I want to see if there's a level select, which I know there is, and let's see if it's possible to uh, to get one more level in there. Let's see. Uh, so where do we get to? Was Oh, well, they're all the same thumbnail. Uh, how far would we get? One, two, three. Probably around here. Nope. Blobby say nope. Blobby is not impressed by your level level select attempt. Oh, well, I think that's what we're going to call it on Blobby. It's an excellent prototype for a game, especially when it was made within a week. That That is very impressive, I got to say. Well done for a week of work, and it just goes to show the power of what Unity can create in a short amount of time with the right developer at the helm. Good work, Storm. I want to see this keep going. I, I want to see you improve this game, make some better levels, make some uh, more challenging obstacles, and make a, make a good time overalls. Good job, Storm. Keep it up, buddy. Keep it up. All right, we're going to do another giveaway, and this one is going to actually be for Nuclear Throne. If you own the game already, I ask that you please don't enter the giveaway. All right, so while we do that, let's go ahead and look over the feedback for Blobby. All right, so the feedback for Blobby begins... 
That eye following is awesome. I definitely agree. That's one of the nicer juice features that I really like about it. Yoko says, why does the light flash when you land? Not a fan of that too intense. Like I said, I'm, I'm personally okay with it. Uh, BPL Laws Jeff says, make the platforms brighter. I would agree. It is a very dark game, isn't it? Obviously, Blobby provides the light to some degree, but you can definitely you can go a little further with that, I think. Three plus moving platforms breaks most people's spirit, says New Bruce. I can definitely agree with that, especially, especially with Blobby. Oh, Blobby. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got here. Lucifer says, "Make the blob adorably cute and charming, so it can become a mascot of your game." It's pretty. It's already pretty darn cute, and I agree. It is already pretty darn cute. In fact, uh, our our good buddy Sarah Soft, the creator of Axel the Penguin, actually created a beautiful little gif of Blobby and uh, Axel together. I, I thought it was freaking adorable. I want to see if I can pull that up real quick. But that that was that was so adorable seeing them together, and he made them all adorable, and I was so like, ah, I was just ah. But I would uh, definitely recommend keep keep upping the cute factor until there's nothing left of it. Uh, Mr. Ros, uh, mi ma mir Merosta, Merosta, Merosta. I'm gonna say it like that. Hopefully that's right. You think the borders of the screen should flash instead of the actual screen? Ah, so you're saying like wherever he lands? Are you saying the screen or the platform should flash? Hmm, we'll have to see. Outlaws Jeff says, uh, what about making the platforms be? other cute characters instead of just plain old bricks. Ooh, Jeff, I like that. They could have faces when you stick to them and such, and their eyes could close and open when you jump off them. Oh my god, that's adorable. Yes! So much yes. Lucifer, thank you for the follow. Yes, so much yes. BP Outlaws, you get you get 20 bits for that. I freaking love that. I freaking love everything about that. New Bruce says, very nostalgic. It reminds you of the little stretchy stretch toys, the sticky stretch toys you get from the vending machines in the grocery store. It looks enjoyable as hell to play. It's very good until you get into the really, really hardcore levels where you actually gotta, like, time everything and be absolutely spot on with your, uh, with your jumping. At that point, it gets a little, uh, little beyond enjoyable, I guess is the best term. It gets a little too tricky to enjoy, unfortunately. Let's see. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm just kind of using the gift that was provided for me for the follower sign. For those noticing my follower sign for the first time, yeah, I just kind of stuck with it because why not? Me gusta. Deal with it. What, you can't deal with it? You can't deal with this? This old... An High sight likes anime. Take that, world. I bet you didn't know that. Well, now you know. And knowing is about one-fourth of the battle, which is actually not worth a whole lot, so don't bother knowing things. Just ain't worth it. Just ain't worth it. Anyway, getting back on track here. Uh, Nier says, would be cool if he left a little slime on the walls after he detaches himself. Another thing, maybe a little hardcore mode with even more bounce. The smaller he gets, uh, the smaller he gets. Ooh, kind of like that. So he would, like, run out of juice as he's... You'd have to, like, recollect the slime if you need more slime, and you get bouncier as you get smaller. That's a neat idea. And he says, if you run... Uh, she says, if you run out of blob meter matter, you restart the level. <laughs> That's actually adorable, morbid, and awesome all at the same time. I love it. I love it. This is why she's my co-game designer. I love it. Co-creator. That's that's the term I'm going for. Yoko says, High side's right. Blobby should jump further uh, the further the cursor is. Perhaps have a visible arc to show the trajectory. Totally agree. Outlaws Jeff says, Totally agree with High Sight. Make the light red whenever you're holding the sticky position. So, you know, I'm going to stick to that wall. Juju Adam says, Pretty obvious point, but all the same... You need some actual environments. Yeah, I mean, made in a week. Art assets aren't cheap. But if you want to expand on it, I totally agree with the whole cute faces thing. That's that's an adorable idea. That's an adorable idea. Uh, what else we got here? Outlaws Jeff says, Maybe he should slide uh, slowly slide down the wall when the player is hanging. Slides faster and faster to go with Sos feedback. I... I worry that if he slides too much, it's gonna throw a lot of things off. Where Where is Soap's feedback? Oh, there it is. Uh, uh, Soap says it would be cool to give the player a time limit for hanging on walls. I also think that the level design could be based on momentum rather than timing. Yeah, I definitely got to re-examine the timing aspect of it. Momentum is going to be a lot more fun to play with, for one thing. And if you're going to have a vertical level, you got to have something to catch you when you fail. Because you're going to fail. It's going to happen. It's just going to happen. What else we got here? Uh... Jude, nope, not you, not you. Lucifer says, environment is rather plain. Yeah, I mean, again, made in a week. I'm going to ignore any real environment gripes. That's what it is. 
Uh, Nubru says, change color or form depending on the whether you're sticking or bouncing. Convey it with color, sound, shape, and everything. Oh yeah, I wanted to talk more about sound design for that game, but I kind of forgot to. Uh, there was no sound in that game, that was obvious, but I was key things that sound would be good for in that game. The sound when you stick to an object, the sound when you bounce off an object, the sound when you, uh, when you launch off an object, the sound of a button press. Uh, I, I think that covers a lot of things to start off with at the very least. Those are some pretty good triggers to at least start off with, I think. What else we got here? Uh, ba -ba -ba. Outlaws Jeff says, This game is cool overall in general. Definitely keep going with it and see where it goes. I agree. Don't just give up on this. For a week, you got a lot done here, and I think if you really polished it up, you could have a great product on your hand here, especially a nice little kid-friendly one that anyone could get into. Orenbot says, The movement mechanics are cool because they're kind of random, but you need to make it so the, if the player does something wrong, they don't feel like it's their fault and not the game's fault. If the player assumes the wrong thing, that's the game design's fault, not teaching you the rules properly. I would agree, especially with the whole touching the side of a wall thing means instant crazy bouncing. Too much. Way too much. Uh, Nubru says, camera needs easing uh, to speed up the player the further it gets away because of the point of view. And as Yoko said, the camera should actually predict ahead of time where you're going. Uh, BPLA says... Uh, the cursor should follow the, or the camera should follow the mouse cursor instead of Blobby himself. Now that'd be a good one. That'd be a good way to go. Lucifer says ultra hard troll game is a thing some people like. Maybe this is the, maybe this game is made for it. Maybe, maybe, but I don't know. I feel like you don't need to be an ultra troll game, do you? I think you could appeal to a lot more people and they could get a lot more fun out of it. But if you want to be a super troll game, that's totally fine. Ah, uh, Juju Adam says, look into N the Ninja Ninja for ideas on how to use physics, especially momentum in a platformer. Bouncing is the key mechanism here. I love N the Ninja. Not to mention N Plus and any other part of the N series. N the Ninja is an excellent example of how to do your platforming physics correctly. Totally check that out. Juju Adams, uh, nope, sorry, Ferreter says, depending on what kind of slime material you're looking for, it might be nice to have the slime splotch on the walls you touch, some of the Meat Boy's blood. Yep, I think Nier covered that earlier, and I definitely agree with that. And you can actually work that into a game mechanic, as Nier said earlier. Kirkinetic says, bouncing around seems like the main mechanic for movement, but from what you've noticed, sticking to the surfaces is what's mostly used. Try flipping the controls, where sticking is the default, and Clicking will allow you to bounce instead. Now, that's a neat idea, Kirk. What if it were a toggle, right? What if it were a toggle instead between bounce mode and stick mode? So you right-click and you toggle between the modes. So when you jump off, if you're still in stick mode, the next thing will be stuck to, as well as the next thing, as well as the next thing. But if you, um, if you are in bounce mode, until you toggle stick mode, you'll just be bouncing all day. I like that idea instead of just toggling for one go. I like that a lot, actually. That's, that's a neat idea for... Uh, Kirknetic, I'm going to give you some bits for that. G good call. Toggle. There you go. Alright, next up, Nubru says, With so many moving platforms, the player is faced with a massive timing challenge up front. In your opinion, having fewer platforms... Uh, have fewer platforms and simpler stationary obstacles. Definitely agree with that. Showcase says... Maybe a power system could change some physics slightly. For example, can't stick but can slide. Hmm. Interesting idea. So different powers for Blobby. I can see that. Bipal as Jeff says, maybe make it so Blobby never sticks unless you're holding the button. So you always know what's going to happen. If you aren't holding the button, he just squishes against the wall and bounces off. I kind of like the toggle idea better personally. I like that a little more. That's just my opinion. But, you know, definitely try everything. Sharkbait says, an idea might be to have Blobby absorb objects so he can weigh more and therefore bounce less. So kind of finding objects along the path and absorbing them in, I could see that. Uh, Outlaws Jeff says, Shark's idea is awesome. Give Blobby a, a weight to collect and absorb to make him less bouncy for the puzzles. Yeah, if you could get interactables, that could be something very different. And lastly, BP Outlaws Jeff says, throw fruits or something around with... Uh, throw fruits or something around and the more Blobby eats, the bigger and heavier he gets and the less bouncy he gets. Get rid of the fruit and by uh, spitting it out as a projectile. Uh, that could be interesting and or disgusting. Why not? All right, I think we got ourselves uh, good stuff right here. I think we got some good stuff. Uh, what are you guys talking about here? Something about Trigon shots. This is what I, 
Argue in favor of Log Horizon is best anime. I haven't seen Log Horizon. I do love Trigun, though. My favorite anime is probably still Fullmetal Alchemist Brotherhood. I think that's just way too up there. Cowboy Bebop's way up there, too, as well as, you know, all the old school good animes. You know the ones I'm talking about. Everybody knows the ones I'm talking about. So, you know, Cowboy Bebop, though. Hey, no problem, KF Storm. It's why we're here. Last call on the giveaway. Five, ten seconds. I used to say Full Metal Alchemist, the original, was the best one until I saw Brotherhood. I mean, Brotherhood just blew it away. I still love the original for what it is, but, you yeah, know, can't go wrong. And the giveaway is... Poto Sniper! Congratulations, Poto Sniper! You have won a copy of Nuclear Throne. I'm going to go ahead and whisper you a key, and it's all yours, buddy. You enjoy that. Hey, Novelspin's with me. Novelspin knows what's up. He knows good games. I mean, there's no disagreeing that Rick and Morty is kind of the best thing ever on TV right now. I mean, don't get me wrong, I still love me some Venture Brothers, am I right? Can I get some fellow Ventures out there, huh? huh? Who doesn't love a little Venture Brothers? But Rick and Morty, I mean, come on. Rick and Morty's amazing. Rick and Morty's just... It's so good. New Bruce want to know where I got a nuclear throne key. Actually, I got it from... Uh, I got it from my indie game box, and it was actually an extra key, and I just had nothing to do with it, so I figured, hey, you know what's a great indie game that I'm sure people would like for a giveaway? Nuclear Throne. So here we are. Nuclear Throne. Alright, but we got our, uh, got our last game of that. You need to look into Venture Brothers. Yes, you do, Yokos. It's one of those shows that just gets better and better and better and better as it goes, because character development is actually a thing in it, and all the characters are amazing and hilarious and awesome, and the world development is amazing. But I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, this is our last game of the night. Our final game, Mini RL. Or Mineral. Min Miner I think it's pronounced Mineral. Mineral. It's supposed to be a subtle mini RL, but you know I'm getting that. This is supposed to be a minimalistic 2D roguelike with puzzle elements, uh, procedurally generated levels, and all that other fun stuff that you love in your roguelites. Now, this is supposed to be as accessible as humanly possible, so that any and everybody in the entire world would be able to play it. So, we're actually going to be looking very deeply into the accessibility of this game to see if it actually holds up as promised. And Nier's going off to stream, so you guys should go check her out after this. I will definitely be... Uh, be giving her a host. I think tonight she might be working on stuff for our game, but we'll see. But yeah, so let's uh, let's not digress too much here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's open up Mini RL. Now, this game is actually by somebody who's been a web designer for 15 years and is looking to transition into game development. So they're very experienced in software, but this is their first solely created video game, from what they've told me. So let's see what they got. Mineral. Alright, let's start off with World 1. First of all, love the sound design. Need help? View the tutorial? Ah, oh, come on, we're talking about accessibility here. This better be a small tutorial. It, it's a pretty small tutorial. Okay, let's see. Gather minerals to level up. Hank loses Hank wins. Uh, Hank is the name. Ah, oh, he's got a name. His name's Hank. Activate the P-switch to open portal and progress. So, it looks like Hank wins battles when he has a bigger number, which are collected through minerals. And there's also a random element if you don't got it. That's actually very accessible, very easy and quick to learn. I'd say the first, the very first time this game's popped up, definitely just show this to us. Or even have it on the load screen. Why not? You know, just make it something that we kind of have to see at least the first time. Alright, so let's see how this plays out. So we want to try to get some gems so we can level up. Can't go through these forests. That's health. We need these guys. So it looks like those snakes will murder me. In fact, I actually can't fight them, can I? Because I don't have any... Yeah, that's health. So let's just test this out. I would lose, right? I lose, but he still disappears. But I don't gain any experience for winning. Now what's this guy? He looks like a saw blade. Should I touch the saw blade? I shouldn't touch the saw blade. Let's grab some health. This is all just me experimenting at this point. So we start off with level 3 enemies and no way to level up high enough to reach level 3. That seems a little overly harsh, doesn't it? So you hit the P-switch, and then there we go. Now this isn't this isn't turn-based, this is all real-time, which is kind of interesting because uh, it's more of a dodging game than anything, you know? Gotta dodge these enemies and move on. Once again, we're faced with enemies that are too strong. I don't know if the buff actually gives me a temporary level up. Let's test that out. No, it does not. It just speeds me up. Oh my. Should not have done any of that. 
Let's try to grab some of these. So it's mostly just patrolling enemies and dodging them and all that fun stuff. Did I hit the P-Switch? Of course I didn't. It's kind of weird that fighting doesn't give you any kind of level up. Like, you can't get- you can't sacrifice health for experience, you know what I mean? That might be a sacrifice some people want to make. So where did the- where did it actually open up? There it is, way back over here. You might want to have some kind of a really quick, like, effect of some sort that kind of transcends the map and actually gives you a bit of a hint where the- where it might be. Like, if you had a big old circle or something, just whoosh, kind of go out across the entire map. Alright, so now we got little mages trying to shoot things at us, but we've leveled up! That's our first level up. Now this is procedural, so of course, you could be stuck on levels that are completely unfair towards you. That is what life is all about. Lack of fairness. So we take the buff, which gives us a little temporary speed boost. Get the good stuff. Don't touch the bad guys, because they'll kill me! I am level 2, so if I find a level 2 dude, I can at least randomize my chance of winning. Better than nothing, I suppose. But how engaging is all of this, really? I mean, it's mostly dodging. It's a lot of dodging. And then it's not dodging when you level up enough. Does that really qualify as a roguelike? No, but it's roguelite, at the very least, I would say. Uh, I'm full health, I don't care about that. So, there's a, th these are actually generating level transitions right there. So if you were wondering what that's about... Oh, ah, that just puts me to sleep. It doesn't actually hurt me. Interesting. So, getting hit by that doesn't mean a lot unless there's somebody around. Alright, let's try to win a fight. Nope, still lost. How about you? I think I won that one. Nope, still lost that. Ah, now I can at least try to fight this guy. There we go, that was a win. And it looks like when I win, I get experience. That's kind of nice. One bubble shield. So how's the music? The music's pretty nice. I like that it doesn't keep repeating every time, so... Now I'm playing the waiting game, right? I'm waiting until number two comes over here so I can beat the crap out of him, and that gets me experience, so that's nice. So we're just gonna keep going until we find more experience and more things to beat up on to try to get experience at least. Oh wow, right next door, okay. Grab you. Is there anything else I can grab around here? Who's got what for me? Ah, there you go. So, it is definitely a question of how engaging it all is, and I don't know, I'm not feeling super engaged by this. I feel like it's just, uh, maybe it'll get more engaging as the levels go on. You always kind of, with roguelikes, you need to start off relatively small. You can't go crazy immediately, otherwise it doesn't really end well for anybody involved. So... I'm going to give it the ban for the doubt until we at least reach level 2, but remember, with any good video game, you want to hit them hard, you want to hit them fast, and you don't want to delay your uh, your presentation. Visually, this game is quite the feast. It's very beautiful, very well stylized, and it's very unified. So now we got level 7 dudes. I doubt I'm going to level up at all here. This this ain't happening. Oh, look at that. That's a, Is that a max... Is that a max health up? I think it is, but it's hard to tell because we don't really have numbers. I need more minerals. Where are my minerals at? The saw blades seem a little out of place, honestly. I get that you're trying to go for some kind of a trap-looking thing, but saw blades don't seem like the right way to go on that. They just, they seem really out of place, especially with the random blood splotch. They, uh, why, why is it only bloody there? Do they move so slowly that only, only a little bit of blood got on them? They're just slightly stained. Level 7 dudes, I don't want to mess with them, but they're guarding all the treasures. Are these ones actually follow? Do they actually, do they have a pattern? Yeah, it looks like they kind of... If you're within their little... No, I think they're just random. Come on. They might be slightly influenced. Oh, that's a free level up. Well, I need that, so... Okay, so free level ups every now and then, and another free level up. I might be able to catch up to all this. I do like that it's all about movement, and that there is actually a movement buff. That's pretty cool. So now we can start killing these dudes. Or at least some of them. I also like that the free level ups didn't remove my ex the experience that I gained so far, because that'd be a horrible feeling. You don't want to do that to us. All right, come on. If I just kill a few more, yeah, come on. Just need to get that level four. There it is. But I will say, I feel like it's a waste that this isn't turn based. As strange as that sounds, it's all about movement, but the movement is so easy. At any time, I can just have a split-second change of heart, because I move a lot faster than most of the enemies, or at least the, the higher-level enemies so far. I'm sure that'll change as time goes on, but it, it seems like it removes a lot of the challenge when I don't really have to prepare my movements, when I can just kind of 
decide that I want to move immediately and dodge something. It, it feels off. It feels off. Well, let's let's see what happens here. Apparently, fire comes later. I'm being told. Okay. So, where is that hidden exit? Is it anywhere towards the beginning? Well, somebody kill at least. I wouldn't mind some numbers attached to these stats, like so I could see my health compared to my max health compared to my experience and how much more experience I need. I understand that you're trying to be an accessible, really easy to enter roguelike, but uh, you know, that doesn't mean you don't need numbers. I mean, you don't need numbers, but they help. They're they're nice to look at. All right, I like that sound. I really like that sound. Ah, here we go. More experience. Minerals. So are you, you're a standard patrol pattern. I like standard patrol patterns, they're predictable. But now we come back to small level design, building up to big level design. So is it accessible? Absolutely. It is exceptionally accessible. I think anybody could pick up this game and figure it out very quickly. And that's good. Is it enjoyable? It's alright. I mean, again, I would love to see this in a more turn-based capacity, personally. I think that if you had to if you had to plan around the movements of everybody instead of just being able to make split-second changes to your movements, I think that could end up adding a lot. Uh, is there any level 6s around here? No? Not really. I think I can't actually reach that now that I look at it. There's also not really a lot more that you can get. Like, I, I don't think I can ever get flight. I don't think I can ever get uh, any kind of advantage over my enemies. Aside from the movement buff. Can I kill you? Nope. How about you? Yeah. No. Yeah. I'm going to need to start leveling up. So this this is really where the risk-reward aspect of the game comes in, I guess. Where you actually have to decide, well, do I want to run the risk of losing health to gain experience? And most of the time the answer is going to be yes. And do you know why? Because there's health everywhere. I think I, I already grabbed all the ones here, but there's health everywhere in these levels so far. Maybe that'll change more in the future, we'll see. The game did suddenly get a little dark. This seems more like a close-to-end level type level, doesn't it? But everybody's still all super happy and, you know, still trying to murder me at the same time, so it's a nice little mix. These weird pig bat things, though. Ugh. Alright, we're at level 8 now, so we can take on most of these pig bats. Let's hit the P-switch. Now, how about the UI? The UI is pretty great. Again, I would love to see... Oh, he moves all over the place. I would love to see uh, some kind of... Some kind of numbers, aside from just the stars, which I actually don't know what the stars are. And the shield and the uh, movement. I'd love to see some health numbers. I'd love to see some uh, experience numbers. Maybe in some experience numbers when you kill something, just have an experience number kind of fly up on you. Like, plus 5 XP or something like that. Alright, gonna probably start stop risking all this. It kind of sucks to lose HP and not get experience for it, but I get it. Gotta have some kind of like meanness to it. If it's not relatively mean-spirited, it's not a roguelike. This is also good music. I, I am really digging this soundtrack so far. The general sound design I'm really digging. It's all very unified along with its visual aesthetic. And I love unified aesthetics. Especially when it's both visu ah, visual and audio. Look at all this XP. I'm in heaven. I should probably try to get used to calling them minerals, but XP is just so commonplace. It's the common tongue. The tongue of the people. Well, we're level 9. We can try to fight these dudes. Not much of a reason not to try, considering all the health that's around here. Oh, well, hang on. Oh, so close. Like, one more kill will probably be enough. But they can float through things, and I can't. I can go through there. There we go. And a level up heals you all the way, too, which is also pretty sweet. Try to get number nine here. Come on, number nine. Uh, I think you were trying to make those sound like Pac-Man sounds, and I approve. Let's see. Yes, links are totally allowed, by the way. Hmm. Well... We'll just keep on 
Keep on trying to get some experience. But at this point, we're in kind of a weird place, because obviously what I want to do right now is I want to try to find everything and kill it, which means... I'm kind of just wasting time, aren't I? I'm just trying to track all these guys down who can who have better mobility than I do. Just to try to hunt them down. And that, that takes a while, you know? It takes a while to do that, especially in bigger maps. And these maps are getting bigger per world. Next one's going to be the biggest one. Alright, I had some health down here, I think. Yep, right there. Oh, there it is. Okay, and there's no point in not clearing out the worlds, because if you don't, you're just kind of handicapping yourself. So you're kind of forced into a scenario where you really have to just go around and get everything. Ooh, buff up, so that's permanent? Oh, that's kind of cool. Well, it's not a great buff, but it's a buff. I do like how easily you convey all these things, though, and how they work. I can pretty quickly figure some of this stuff out. Ooh, that's a bomb. Oh, well, hello. I don't exactly know what you did, but I'm cool with it because it looked awesome. Uh, so here's how this is going to work. I'm going to get healed when I level up. Well, not exactly what I wanted to do, but it worked out. Leveled up quicker than I wanted to. I'm complaining that I leveled up too quick. Like a champ. Another bomb. Still not entirely sure what the bombs do. I guess they just randomly shoot out and hopefully kill something with them? I don't know. Level 12. So for a first attempt, uh, for a first whack at a game, it's definitely got the aesthetic aspect down well better than many other games that I've ever seen. I mean, completely nailed aesthetic, both visual and audio. But as for, as for the engagement, it's a little, little hit and miss, I think. It's definitely got that initial engagement, but then once you've done one world, it feels like you've done them all, because you're not throwing enough elements at me at once. Right now it feels like I'm just rehashing a lot of things over and over again until I get to the next part where I finally get to see new things, right? Like, I didn't see these rock dudes until just now, and this is the end of the level. Why didn't I see these guys at at least the fourth stage, or the, the third stage even, of this level? And the only thing that makes some harder than others is just bigger numbers. And granted, you could say that about almost everything related to roguelikes, but, you know, that's not the point. Bigger numbers are important, but they need to be engaging, too. It can't just all be about, hey, I have the bigger number, so I win. It's gotta, there's gotta be some level of worry that coming up against even a smaller number might screw you over if you're not, pre if you're ill prepared, right? I mean, let's look at most roguelikes. I mean, again, we're going for accessibility here, so in terms of that, nailed it. But if we wanted to get more complex, and I think this is an important subject to tackle, if we're looking at roguelikes, we need to consider that the player should never feel at ease, or at least not feel at ease until they're well, well in. You should be able to die to little things by getting swarmed by them. But right here, it's you just kill anything if, you, if it's smaller than you every time. Uh, you should have to worry about little things that might have poison effects on them, because, hey, it might just be a rat, but guess what? That rat has rabies. Now you have rabies. Through your rabies, you're going insane. And now that you're going insane, you're trying to kill anything around you, whether you want to or not. And because of that, you can decide to fight the level 500 thing. But you're only level 10, so that's going to be a quick, painful death. So let's go ahead and see what else... What else we got? So we got little foxes now, and we're back to the small level, so now we're going to move on to a slightly bigger level. It's a pretty straightforward pattern. Uh, now we're getting to the point where I'm going to need to start leveling up off of either foxes or gems. Minerals, rather. I should grab these buffs, too. So, so far from what I see of these buffs, they help with speed. And there's some shield ones. I still don't know what the star ones are all about. I don't know when those come into play. Probably at a later time. And we just get introduced to bombs, which I still don't fully grasp. Bad luck on both. Bad luck on both. Good luck. Aw, oh, it sounds so sad. At least I give a lot of experience. You know, if I win. Alright, where's that exit? Alright. Uh, actually, I can't seem to move. Oh, there we go. That was weird. Hey, listen. A little bit of a weird bug right there. Ah, Yoko says feedback here. From what I can tell, there isn't much difference between runs or worlds. Uh, you've done one run, you've done them all. You really need some kind of distinguishing feature between runs. 
slash worlds, other than the aesthetic and size of numbers. I definitely agree, like, most of these number, most of these enemies are basically rehashes, right? I mean, we got the guy who's shooting things, granted these ones aren't moving, the other ones usually were. We got, uh, the fox, which is basically the snake, uh, before we had the bat, which, bat pig thing, which is basically the snake. It's entirely true, once you've done one world, you've basically done them all, and then at that point, you're just kinda in it for the long haul, or you're just gonna abandon it. It's a tricky middle ground to make sure you have enough creativity between things, but that it's not over the top, you know? It's not like uh, throwing too many elements at you, I guess you could say. But if you can meet that that uh, challenge, your game will be way better for it. Oh, I don't want to go that way. I could plow through Mr. Snowman, but that would just kind of hurt. But, oh, that's actually... Okay, well, hey, a slowdown. That's kind of cool. See, there you go. A little bit of a game changer right there. It's small, but it's a detail. Little things, folks. There's our level up. And now... Let's see if we can go kill off some other dudes. I think that ice pit could be a little better to find. I didn't think it was an ice pit. I thought it was just a different clumping of trees at first. It does have the little particle effects. But even still, first time around you might not realize that. Ah, uh, no, I don't want to lose health to get health. That won't work. Actually, I don't even need to get health anymore. I leveled up. I can try killing the level 15 snowman if I'm lucky. Nope. How about you? You look pretty weak. Yeah, you were weak as hell. How about you? No, you were... You were a fighter. You were not willing to die. Ah, more foxes. I like hunting foxes. That is not something that I want quoted out of context. And yet I know it will be. Okay, there we go. Again, good sound choices. All the enemies have good sound effects attached to them, and they all seem to be very fitting. I like that. I dig it. Eh, let's take the risk. Nope, bad risk. Come here, Mr. Fox. Ooh, it's a star! I want to know what the star does. And level 16. Kill, kill. Kill, take. What does star do? Ooh. Not what I hoped it would. Spacebar? How about... Let's look at the controls real quick. Items and status. Shield... Revive! Ooh, so if I die, I come back. Me gusta. Eh, we can take a few risks now, I guess. Okay, okay. See if we can find more level 15s. They leveled me up pretty quick. The experience seems like it kind of boosted a little bit. In all regards. Uh, we can risk it. Nope. Hey, 15, you're going to level me up, aren't you? Nope, but maybe your buddy will. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> uh, what's this guy's name? Hank? I think his name was Hank. Let's see. Hank? Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I can't go back to gameplay. That's where it says his name. I want to know his name. There it is, Hank. Yeah, Hank. Hank has a bloodlust. Hank has a horrible bloodlust. I mean, imagine this. He's going around, he's killing foxes, he's knocking down little boy snowmen that they put the magic hats on so, so they would be able to talk and dance around, and they're just like, you know what? Screw your snowman. My name's Hank, and I hate all of you. Hank is just, he's kind of a dick when you think about it, but I don't know. He's got a little charm to him. He's got, he's got a little charm to him. You can't stay mad at Hank. It's, ah, now I got Abominable Snowman, which I love that I can actually identify him as such, just by that little piece of hair he has going. I dig it. I dig it. I can't get to any of those guys, can I? Dang. That was free experience. Gone. Yeah, grab all the things. Let's get a little buff going here, huh? Hey, I lost that fight. Pretty bad. Don't care. So yeah, I mean, it's it gets a little more engaging when you start facing enemies that throw more at you. But the thing is, I still move faster than everybody. Look at look at how fast I move compared to the abominable snowman here. He's probably my biggest threat, and yet I can just breeze past him. I don't have to plan my movements all that much. It's just a question of moving around him the second I see him. It, that's where the engagement's going to come into play, is actually having to utilize your movement to dodge things. And if you're not going to do that in a turn-based mode, then you got to make sure you do it to some degree or another in a real-time mode. 
Because right now it's just a little too simple to to get out of the way of these guys. That was probably the most dangerous situation I've been in all game, but I still didn't get hit, because I, I can predict how this is all going to go down. I can actually go around. Oh, well, maybe I can't. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. Maybe I can. There we go. It's all about the waiting game. How about you? Are you going to die? Yeah, you will. Kill all y'all. Om nom nom nom. Oh, and a shield. Freebie. Bosses. Bosses would be a cool idea. I don't know exactly how you do it perfectly because, I mean, it is basically a game about immediately killing or getting hurt. So, how could you really do a boss with this game? Let's, uh, let's workshop that. Let's workshop that. How could you do a boss in this game? I guess you would have to have multiple components or something, right? Like, a big boss would have, like, a, two fists, uh, a head, and maybe the head has a certain level count or something that, um... Hmm... Because, again, you're going to defeat them either immediately, or you're not going to be strong enough. And if you're not strong enough, then you basically blew the whole way getting up here, didn't you? And that's where you kind of draw yourself into a corner with this formula. It's, it's a question of, are you strong enough at this moment? And if not, what are you going to do about it? You're, you're going to die. That's kind of the way the gameplay works right now. And you need to stop having fun in your little ice bath. I need to... I will go in there and hurt you. Okay, I'm taking it. Get out of here. Y you got to think about... How could you do a boss with this kind of game mode? I, is it doable? Very possibly, but you're going to have to really think long and hard about how you're going to do it. You have to make sure the player found a way to get high enough level to actually do something. Yeah, it would have to be like a multiple parts thing, but remember, you got to make sure your player's strong enough. If they're not strong enough, they can't go back to level up more, so they're just screwed. So how can you confirm that your player is strong enough? You could have each part... You could have the, the enemy drop out little enemies. That, that might be a way. The enemy drops out lower level enemies, and then you can eat them to try to survive. That, that could be one way. Oh, hey, teleporter mechanic. That's neat. So how about that? You got, you got a big enemy, a big monster, big boss, that has multiple parts, that can spawn other little enemies that can help you level up to the point that you need to get to actually hurt the parts, and... All the time he's firing stuff at you, you know? That could work. Because then you don't have to worry so much about the player being high enough level. It's just a question of getting him there from then on. And does that cheapen the rest of the experience? It might. But the lower level you are going in, the harder a time you're going to have. So if you can't earn your way up, then you're in trouble. So we're going to have to P-switch out of here now because I can't collect anything anymore. Where did that P-switch? There it is. Always in the top right. That's one thing I've noticed. The P-Switch is always in the top right. I don't know if you want to change that up a bit. I know you've changed where the warp is at the end, but... Eh, I don't know. I guess it works. Because you still got to find the exit. Ooh, he moved into me. Rude. There's our level up. And maybe another. Eh, I'll risk it. Yeah, I will. Level 20, get over here. You got work to do. Are these guys the new shooting enemies? No, they're teleporting enemies. That's new. I like that. That's a new mechanic. I dig new mechanics. It's kind of my thing. Hey, and now I can at least try to fight you. Yeah, there we go. RN Jesus loves me tonight. You just need to accept RN Jesus into your heart because you need to accept he died for our crits. And it was good. Well, it was bad, but good-ish. Good for me. Aw, come on, man. As much as I do like the teleporting mechanic, you can't make it too frequent. Otherwise, you might have somebody moving in for a kill, and then suddenly... Nope! Change my mind! Hmm. Where's number 22? There he is. There we go. Give me that... Give me that mineral. Alright, I think I got all the 22s I can get here. So what's the big uh, offensive that these guys have? I think you need something in addition to the teleporting, and I would recommend that be shooting. These guys should teleport and then shoot, and then teleport and then shoot. If they're just teleporting, what's the risk? You run into them? Okay, I guess maybe, but... I think you'd be a lot better off if you just had some kind of a, a shooting mechanic attached to them as well. Yes, kill everything, grow stronger. Go, Mineral. I believe in you. Level up, yes! The free level ups are real! I can eat everything now. I am the Pac-Man. You are the 
pack is manis, I don't know. The point is you're dying. Oh, come here, you. Om nom nom. Ah, here we go. Come on. Teleport all around. Come on. Why are these ones yellow? Do they hurt? I don't see the difference. Eh, yeah, whatever. Particle effects are particle effects. Juice is juice. Thank y'all. Actually, I really wanted that buff. Alright, let's find the good warp zone out of here. It's not that one. It's not those ones. It's not them. How do I get out of here? Bigger levels, they get a little frustrating because you can't find the exit. And then there's no threat anymore. So what do you do? What do you do? You jump into another black hole and it leads you to nowhere. It leads you to nothing but sadness. Oh, this this game could definitely do quite well on mobile. I have no doubt in that of that in my mind. Oh, there it is. If it's not already for mobile, I would definitely recommend porting it for mobile. But I would definitely tighten up the difficulty, because accessibility is one thing, but easy? Eh, you don't want to make things too easy. You want to make sure there's at least some challenge. Right now, I think it's just a little too much in the easy zone. Ah, oh, I wanted to kill him. I'm getting there. I'm actually curious what max level is. There we go. Free level up. Oh yeah, we're, we're gonna get this. I think we're gonna win our first run of this game. The controls are a bit of a pain to figure out. Have you considered uh, just like an analog stick system? Anywhere on screen? So, you know, if you push down on the screen somewhere and then you move to the right, the character will move to the right, move to the left, and, and it doesn't have to be like on screen. It can be just if you start pressing down anywhere on screen, an analog stick forms around there, and then you just move from there. I think that'd work out nicely. Get all the experience, because if I don't, I'll might, I might die in the future. Maybe, probably not. I don't know. I don't know what levels I'll be facing. Probably 30-somethings. Come here. Come here, Darth Vader-ish. Buffy buff. Now, I notice when you get the buff, you kind of outrun the camera sometimes. The ease might need to be a little higher when you have the buff. Probably make that ease dependent on your movement speed. Hmm. Where did I escape? Uh, I would definitely give some kind of a hint. Oh, here we go. As to where the escape is. Even if it's like a quick directional thing, like I was saying before, of like a circle expanding from where it is all the way out to the end. So it's like, whew. Oh boy, here we go. We're in hell zone. This place don't look friendly. Although that looks almost like a panda. And he has a lot of life, or a lot of level material, if you will. I mean, I could always just not fight. I'd love to try it. This, this game might be kind of cool to do a pacifist run on, you know? Just kill nobody. Oh, wow. Okay, so this is how we're playing, huh? This is what we're doing. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. Natural born killer. Remember, once I hit the right level, I don't gotta worry about anything. I just win, basically. Give me them level ups. You don't need those level ups. And now maybe I get you. And now maybe I eat you. I would actually almost recommend that you could still randomize the battles based off of level. Like, even if you're the higher level, I don't think that means you should automatically win. I think that means it should be random, but you have a higher chance of winning, you know? Because you need to have some kind of fear of the lower levels. I love how creepy this music got, by the way. Oh boy, this took a turn. Took a hell of a turn. Because right now, once I hit the right level, I just have no fear anymore. The only fear I have is environmental objects and maybe the stray fireball that might hit me. 30, 31, 31. And that should level me up there. There he is, 33. Nope, 32 though. Yeah, the sound design's on point. At this point, I'm just going to play this through to the end. I'm kind of curious how it how it goes. But I think this game would do quite well on mobile. 
Its visual style alone is going to pull people in very quickly. Are we going to get it? Yeah, there it is, level 34. So hopefully next level we got something stronger than 34. Arr. But yeah, I, I really don't have too much more commentary about this game. I think it's got some flaws, but I think it's got uh, it's got a lot of heart. Heart's important, it really is. It's got the right visual style. It's something, it achieves a visual style that a lot of games just do not understand. Not, not as visual, but audio style that mixes beautifully with it. All of it is so beautifully unified, and that is shocking, especially for, for a first try at a game for some, from somebody. It's just shockingly well done in all regards. I think the weakest point, though, is just the level of engagement. I think that some there could be some more done to try to keep this just as accessible as it is, but just to get some more uh, diversity and difficulty into it, you know? Wait, I want to hit level 37 first because I can. Get over here. There we go. But the sound design, dear God, I love the sound design. It is beautiful. It is up there, let me tell you. Oh, look at you. You're the big bad guys? I'm already higher than you. Ah, oh, you leave fire trails, don't you? Oh, that's just rude. My movement speed's up and everything. I'm going crazy. Get that. Get that. I don't want to touch your fireballs. Get over here. Face me like a Batman thing. I don't know. Come on. I can't reach you over there. There you go. I can still die if, I'm, if I play it stupid, but I think at this point I pretty much got it. I want to eat y'all. I want a perfect game where I eat everything I possibly can. But at the same time, I don't want to die, so. Well, I do have the one revive, don't I? The revive honestly seems a little out of place. I don't know if you really need it. I've only found one in this entire run, which I assume is on purpose. You don't want to make them too common, but, you know, when you screw up enough, I think you just deserve to lose... The bomb also seems a little out of place. I mean, there you go, everything died, but... What does that lead me to do? Where, where do I get my experience then, you know? Actually, did everything die? Did it kill... It couldn't have killed everything, the other ones didn't. No, well, maybe it did. Well, level 40. Not too shabby, not too shabby. If I do say so myself. And I believe... That is the end. So let's see what your big reward is for, for finishing. Victory! Speedrun time! Alright, so I kind of had a, I had a feeling this game was a bit about the speedrunning aspect, and I can see that. I can respect that. Total hits, total kills. I love these stats. These stats are brilliant. But you might want something a little flashier for your big end screen, you know? Ah, look at that. Love this music. Jesse W.D. James. Outstanding work, Jesse. Well done, sir. Chris Simmons, congratulations. Sound mixing, good sound mixing right there. Paul Lipscomb, good choice, sir. Sarah Winter, that's some good production coordination you did right there. Them beta testers, I like them. That was some good beta testers. I didn't find much of any bugs in there. So thanks to your uh, girlfriend, Tony. Aw, isn't that cute? Excellent music selection, excellent sound design, excellent visual style, all around outstanding work. The gameplay, though, needs just a bit more engagement. But other than that, very well done. Very well done. And it's definitely got that replayability because you got those stats logged somewhere, I hope. What? Where the heck are my stats? How do you not have a leaderboard or any kind of stat saving? Sir! Sir! What happened to my stats? What happened to my last 20-ish minutes of work? Where, where did they go? I have no record of any of this aside from this lovely video recording that everyone's going to see. Come on, sir. You need those stats. You need to be able to fight against yourself. You need to... I want to see even like... Uh, well, you can't really do a ghost against yourself at random levels, but the point is... Come on, sir. Sir. Come on. I believe you can do better than that. But overall, outstanding first attempt at a video game. Very much liked it. Very, very much enjoyed the whole aspect of it. The visual, the audio. Great work. Just wonderful first game. Just wonderful. Now get a leaderboard in there, get it on the mobile devices, and I will see that game in the uh, selling out section of, you know, the mobile stores. Good job. Alright, I can call you up and you'll confirm I did it. Alright, alright, as long as you'll tell people. As long as you'll tell people. Alright, so that was, uh, that was Mineral by 
uh, game death in here, grim death in here rather. Feel free to post as many links as you want there. And now we have one last giveaway, and this one is a little bit of a game changer. This one is actually for Sleeping Dogs, which was donated to me by uh, Kemp. Kemp Plays, a very cool YouTuber who does very cool, uh, who checks out very cool games. Very big supporter of the show, even though he can never make it by because he's over in the UK and it's super late for him. But if you want your chance to win Sleeping Dogs, go ahead and enter for the giveaway. Max LP, thank you for the follow. Hmm. Alright, now let's go ahead and look at some feedback. First off, we have BP Outlaws Jeff saying, uh, nope, not that. Hang on. That was for Blobby. There we go. We have Lucifer saying, numbers on characters are pretty small for how important they are. I guess you could make them bigger. I honestly think they were big enough for me, but maybe it's because I'm the one in front of the screen playing. I could see that. Showcase says, absolutely perfect menu screens. If you do feel that there needs to be a quick transition, uh, yeah. You do feel like there needs to be a quick and transition animation. Transition ma animation, I definitely agree with Showcase. I would say that the reason it probably took so long was because it was generating the levels. Admittedly, they probably could generate quicker than that, or you might be able to generate them all in one big batch while you're playing. But it didn't really affect me much. I think it was fine. Lucifer says, Make the player much, much, much faster. I think that would kind of actually hurt the gameplay, believe it or not, because uh, the whole game is based around mobility because it's not turn-based, so by making the player faster, you end up shooting yourself in the foot because then you can dodge even more things, which I was already commenting on. Sure, you can make all the enemies faster too, but at some point it's going to get unwieldy. I would say if you want to up the difficulty, that'd be the first thing i do is make everything faster. That might up the difficulty to some degree at the very least. Showcase says, when transitioning to a new level, a small animation is needed to help visually pinpoint the character on screen as soon as it starts. That'd be nice, I agree. Numer says, the music is grooving and fits the look, with, uh, uh, which is eye-poppingly cute as hell. Give me a reason to enter this cuteness and you'll never return it to real life. Ha, huh, new Bruce. Sharkbait says, a suggestion for finding the end level after pressing the P button is to pan the camera to it so the player knows the path and they don't have to wander about looking for it. I think that'd make it a little too easy. I think some kind of a, a subtle indicator, like I was saying before, about some kind of like almost explosion that goes across the entire map might be a better way to go. Yeah, I wouldn't say the art clashes. I think the art looks fine. I, I think the art looks to totally fine. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Orinbot says... There needs to be a big incentive for killing enemies, one so big that the player of level 7 will want to attack a level 7 enemy to do the gamble. Yeah, I mean, I just did it constantly because there actually, it was, there was reward in doing it. There was actually not enough risk in doing it, because if I lost the fight, it didn't really matter much. I lost a little bit of HP and there was health everywhere. I, or I might win and then I might level up. So honestly, if anything, I'd say the reward was too high for the risk that was at hand. Because you need to kill them. You need to try at least. So just do it. Novelspin says, make it more obvious when you're stronger than an enemy, like in Pac-Man. Make the enemies behave differently based on whether or not you're stronger. Also like Pac-Man. I like that idea, Novel. Like if they run away from you, I'm going to give you some bits for that. I like that. So let's give... Novel spin. I'll give you a 10 for that. I like that idea. Next up, we have VP Outlaws Jeff saying, May maybe make everything faster as you power up. So the more you power up, the riskier it gets to run around randomly. So you're saying, like, if you're a lower level, you kind of creep and sneak past enemies, whereas if you're a higher level, you got to pretty much fight them eventually because it's just going to be moving so fast that they're almost unavoidable. That's a neat idea. Yoko says... From what you can tell, there isn't much difference between runs or worlds. Oh, yes, we talked about this. Uh, I would kind of agree. You start to see a lot of rehashes and enemy types. you got to really diversify some of them enemies, and you got to make them more dangerous as you go on. They can't be the same things over and over. Uh, like, the first time, okay, the shooty guys only put you to sleep. Then the second time, they hurt you. Then the third time, they hurt you. Then the fourth time, they hurt you. Not a lot of difference between them after the sleeping one. Uh... The other guy on Twitch says, Teleport and Death Slide. I think you're talking about the uh, the new enemies, uh, the ones you saw that teleported. That's a neat idea, actually having them try to ram in one direction after they teleport. But you would need some kind of an indicator that, one, they're getting ready to ram, and two, you can tell what direction they're going to ram. So you can kind of plan ahead for that. But that is a neat idea. 
Uh, Lucifer says, totally agree. Both the enemy and the player need a massive speed boost. I, I would like to actually see that. I'd like to see how that plays out. And lastly, Nubru says, visually beating the snot out of a ton of games. Uh, wait. Visually beating... Oh, yeah, the game. The big game is visually beating the snot out of a ton of other games. Keep that gameplay fast and furious, though. Seems a bit too plodding. Maybe players swipe their phone so hard that it breaks. Or make, make people swipe the phone so hard that it breaks. Ah, good times. Might get some lawsuits there, but it'd be worth it if only to say, Hey, my game's so good it broke people's phones. I don't know if that's exactly what you're going for, but that'll work. Alright, now before we move on f on to the giveaway, I do of course want to say, you know, don't forget to follow me on all these social channels if you're new here. I got a YouTube where this will be posted down the line. I got a Twitter where I tweet out all sorts of fun, interesting things going on in both life, death, and all between. And I got a Steam group that will let you know immediately whenever my stream goes live. As soon as I go live, the Steam group will let you know. So go ahead and join in on all that. Good times ahead. But I think we're going to finish up our giveaway here and then we're going to turn it over to Nier. And that is actually true. I do actually have a subreddit that I actually have no real part in. It was created by Random Mr. Blue a long time ago. So that's uh, slash r slash high I also have a website. So there's that too. Highsight.tv. I should probably actually advertise that somewhere. Definitely recommend Highsight.tv. I got a subscription email subscriber thing on the right side there. Go subscribe your email and all that fun stuff. Last call and giveaway for Sleeping Dogs. And we're ending on one of the best songs ever. Prancing Dad. I didn't even plan this. This was random. The world wanted us to hear this. You're welcome, world. Five, four, three, two, one. And the winner of Sleeping Dogs is... Sharkbait. There he is. Ah, he has to win one eventually. Congratulations, Sharkbait. You enjoy your copy of Sleeping Dogs. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is our show for the night. I want to thank everybody for coming out and giving their feedback. Don't go just yet, though, because I'm going to throw you guys over to Nier, who is actually, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure she's working on our uh, the, the artwork for our game, which I will continue programming tomorrow night. So you got to go give her some love. Go over to Nier. Say, you know, we're, we're going to raid her, basically. Go over there. Go check her out. Go say hi to her. She's an awesome person, awesome artist, and in general... You know, she's, oh, she's doing some, uh, no, she's doing some pixel art for our game. So, yeah, go give her some love. That's our show, everybody. Thanks for coming out. Welcome to the newcomers, Grim Death, uh, Lucifer, all of you. Thank you so much for the submissions. Love you guys so much. I hope to see you all next time, and I will see you all tomorrow for game development. Take care, everybody.